that in it. Uh, today, I want to talk about two things uh, that, that's happening and what God is doing. Uh, the first thing is angry dreams. If I can explain angry dreams, if you look in the book of Job, I believe it is in the 33rd chapter and the 15th verse, it says, it says that uh, God said, I speak to man once, he don't listen. I speak to him again, he doesn't perceive. And then the Bible says, God said, I put, he put man in a deep sleep and a slumber. And when he's in a deep sleep and a slumber there, he opened up his ear and he sealed his purpose. And many of you, this is, this is, this is what's happening. This is what's happening to many of you. Uh, if I can explain from that scripture in itself, every day, every day, my son wakes up, Daniel. Every day he wakes up, he's angry. And every day he wakes up, he's frustrated. And now, if you look at it, you see where he's come from. It's been nine, ten months. He's on his feet now. He, he's walking. But he's angry. He's depressed. He's frustrated. And, and what's been happening lately is that God is really speaking to him. And what God is doing now, God has been giving him dreams all the time. Giving him dreams. Shooting dreams to him. And what? And my son came to me the other day and he said, why is God giving me these dreams? And then when I wake up, I can't do it. I can't walk like the dream. I can't move my legs like the dream. And I was letting my son know, son, God is getting you ready. That's all it is. He's getting you ready. He's showing you what is getting ready to manifest. So I all the time I tell my son, son, hang in there. It's happening. Hang in there. And now for a 13 year old, he don't want to hear that. He don't want to hear no that sound just hang in there. <laughs> you know, he he's ready to walk. He went to run right now. And so he's frustrated. And he's angry, he's angry at God, he's angry, he's frustrated. And it's almost like every time he dreams, even though the dream, I know what God is saying, that dream frustrates him. That promise frustrates him because that's what he's been, that's been his goal is to get back on his feet and to walk without any help. And God's showing him that it's about to happen. And then the dream was already happening. I uh, see because anything that happens first, naturally it happens first spiritually. And so, but he's discouraged, he's upset, he's angry. And so my main focus is just to encourage him, just keep encouraging him because when I'm around him, I can feel him. I can feel his anger. I can feel his disappointment. Even though I can feel it and I can see his condition, I see what God is doing. And so a lot of times me as dad, I have to fight my feelings and I have to fight my moods and my emotions because I know what God is doing. See, the thing about it with faith, faith, see, a lot of times people look at certain things like a vacuum cleaner as far as when a person look at a vacuum cleaner, the only thing that they, they think that the vacuum cleaner can only do is just vacuum. But a vacuum cleaner has many, many departments. And so the thing that, that I'm trying to uh, let my son know is just to hang in there because what's happening is that God is releasing. God is it's about to happen. It's about to take place. And matter of fact, my son, it's, it could happen any day now. And this is, this is what I want to say to so, so many of you. God says that many of you, you are tired of the dreams. You're tired of the promises that people, you get it from the Bible or you get it from prophetic utterance. You get it from strangers. Uh, you get it from all where, all over where people keep coming to you or you keep hearing the same old word where God is saying, you're going to get this. You're going to be elevated. You're going to get this promotion. Uh, you're going to get healed. You're going to get this better job. You're going to, uh, you're going to get this a certain amount of money that the kingdom can be advanced. See, because in your heart, your heart is right. Your heart, you just want to do what God wants you to do. You want to do the will of God. It's not about money, but you want to do what God wants you. You want to do what God wants you to do. It's not a selfish thing. And so from that place, you're discouraged because these promises keep coming. It seems like you keep hearing it. You keep hearing more and more promises. You keep hearing more and more promises that God's going to do this. More and more God's going to do that. And it's almost like the blessing or the promise, it feels like it's become a thorn. Every good news, it feels like every good news that you hear, it it feels like a thorn. And so you don't want to hear it. You are tired of hearing 
those words. And you say it in your spirit over and over again, God, I'm tired of hearing over and over again, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to take place. God, I want to happen now. God, I'm tired of waiting. Now, this is what you're saying in your, in your heart. And the, 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 the danger or the, the biggest thing that you must do is to be careful what comes out of your mouth. See, because uh, what you're in, this test that you're in, God is, 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 is developing you. And based on how you respond to this one particular test will determine where you be completely developed in God's plan concerning this test, or you will be partially or undeveloped. And see, also in this particular trial and dilemma and, and pains and pressure that many of you are under, what is doing the things in your life that the small habits, the small things that were small at one time, now that this pressure, now that this thing, now that this, this warfare has hit you, is magnified. Everything in your life that at one time was small that you can maybe can handle it. Now it's big and it feels like you can't handle it. And so now the test is, see, what's happening also, God is also causing everything in your life to be brought up. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And the reason that God is causing these things to come up, like your attitudes, your emotions, your appetites, uh, your habits. The reason why <coughs> God wants you to see it and he wants you to deal with it. He wants you to see it and he wants you to deal with it. So this is why all these things are happening. And so this is why <coughs> you need temperance because your temperament is very important in this particular uh, place in your life. This is where, when I said angry dreams, this is where the connection of the spirit of rejection, this is where you must be careful and learn how to deal with the spirit of rejection because through this one particular test and what you're going through, it will determine your promotion. See, where you are right now, you're at the verge of receiving your promotion or your elevation, but you must remain faithful and you must be able to deal with the test. That's just like in school. You take in school, uh, you know, during the semester and during each, each day, each day, the teachers, they, they talk about this. The teacher talk about what's going to be on the test. And the purpose, the students, they're supposed to take notes. But then at the end of that day or at a certain time, they must, over a certain period of time, maybe an hour or two, you must take a test. And in this test, we determine who listen, who gather the information, and those who listen cl clearly and gather the information will pass the test. And see, this is what's happening right now. You're in the classroom and you're taking the test. And you have a, uh, you have a certain time period and time schedule wherein you must execute this test because uh, based on your grade will determine your elevation. And so this is what's happening right now. You must be careful. And so this is why also while you're in your test, this is why you must hear God, listen to God, because the Bible says that the Holy Ghost, the spirit of truth, the Bible says that the spirit of truth, Jesus told the disciples that the Holy Ghost must go away. I must go away. If I don't go away, the spirit of truth will not come. And the purpose of the spirit of truth, which is called the, the parakletos, which is a part of God that helps us, which is the part of God that gives us the strength and makes us be able to stand. See, because we can't stand by ourselves, but we need extra help. And so that's why we have the spirit of God, parakletos. And so if you don't have the spirit of God or his Holy Spirit acts for him, because what he told the disciples, the spirit of God, what he will do, he will lead and guide you in all truth. He's a reprover. But also he will bring all things back to your remembrance. And so that's why it's so important to have the spirit of God in your spirit. And also it's important to have a quiet spirit because in this place of pain and this place of pressure, this is where when you have a quiet spirit, the Holy Ghost, the spirit of God will bring things back to your spirit, back, back to your remembrance. In other words, when tests come at you, the Bible says, even look at this, the Bible says that when the spirit when the enemy comes in after the flood, the Bible said the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against the enemy. That standard is the word. That word is already in you, which means that when you come up under attack, the standard, the word that's in you already will speak. This is what gives you strength to bear. And so this is why it's so important to learn how to deal with rejection. The way you deal with rejection is by going to God and asking God, 
to give you strength and teach you how to deal with the things that hurt. See, because when a person has become rejected, that means that you're no good. That means that you're not qualified. That could mean that you're not good enough. And so it's a form of rejection. This is one of the things that my son Daniel faces every day, rejection. Every day he wake up, he's rejected. He feels rejected because he can't do exactly what he want to do. Can you imagine that? A 13-year-old boy facing and dealing with rejection every day, every day. Every day he's angry, every day. But yet and still, he presses his way. He forces and he push himself and go forward. And my job as a governor, as his dad, is to watch over him and protect him and let him know, yeah, I know you're going through what you're going through, son, but hang in there. Most of the time, that's all I know how to tell my son is to hang in there. And so this is the word that I'm telling you today is to hang in there. And see, because in this rejection, in the spirit of rejection, there comes the fear of rejection. And the fear of rejection is the thing of where you feel like you're afraid of trying again because you feel as though you're going to be rejected again. You feel as though people are not going to accept you again. And see, but see, see, but when you do that, you're becoming immobilized or you become immobilized or you're becoming paralyzed by fear. Do not allow the fear or rejection of what somebody did or what you think that somebody might feel stop you from doing what God called you to do. Because when you do that, when you don't do what God has called you to do, you know what you're doing? You're disobeying God. When God tells you to do something, but you're afraid to do it, you are disobeying God. And that's sin, which means that the promise that you want from God, you will not receive it until you do your first work over or you face that fear. See, God wants you to face that fear because, see, God has not given us a spirit of fear. See, because fear has torment. But God has given us power, love, and a sound mind. And in that power is ability and access and know-how to be able to overcome. See, God wants you to overcome your past. God wants you to overcome that rejection. And some of you, that fear of rejection, that spirit of rejection, it started as a child. It started as a child where you were rejected as a child. You rejected it maybe by your mother or you rejected it by your father or you rejected it by your peers or whatever it is over a period of time, that particular mindset <clears throat> or that particular sound began to speak to you and that fear shaped you and it caused you to have a certain position toward things and people. And so many of you, you're in a certain bubble. This fear has created a certain type of cultural bubble wherein everybody around you are suspect, especially when uh, you get into a place where you feel like you're in a, a familiar situation that it brought rejection. See, the spirit of rejection and the fear of rejection has a voice. And this voice is telling you not to do something. This voice is telling you that you're defeated. This voice is telling you that you're always going to be unhappy. This voice is telling you that you will never become successful. This voice is telling you that you will never reach your target. This voice is telling you that you will never fulfill your purpose. <clears throat> but this voice is a liar from the pit of hell. And what you need to do is to learn how to face rejection, just like Jesus did. See, because the Bible said he was despised and rejected a man, a man of, of sorrow and acquainted with grief. But what he did, he rejected and he despised the shame. He rejected all of that and he sat down at the throne of the father. And the way to despise or face rejection is by uh, submitting to God. And the moment that you submit to God, and when you submit to God, then you're going to God's going to teach you how to resist the devil. Because the Bible says if you resist the devil, he will flee. The way you get to that fear is to go to God. See, because in you going to God, God is going to release that release or remove that fear with faith. And how do you receive that faith? Faith comes by hearing. See, in other words, the fear of rejection, you need to get away from everything that's speaking to you of fear. Speaking to you negative. So what you need to do, you need to <coughs> remove yourself from the environment that's feeding your mind and that's feeding your heart with fear. Hear me. The Bible says separate yourself from light must separate from darkness. There's no fellowship that you have with darkness if you of the light. And so what you must do in order to receive or rebuke the spirit or the fear of rejection is reject 
everything that sounds like rejection. Reject those people that talk rejection. Re talk, reject those people that talk negative. Those people that gossip. Those people that operate in the works of the flesh. Those people that don't have uh, your purpose, your positive purpose. Those people that don't have godly purpose. Those people that always bitter. Those people that always negative. Learn how to reject or remove yourself from those people. And embrace and, and go around people that are positive. Go around people that are happy. Go around people that are full of love. And see what it is, it's a behavior. See, it's a behavior. See, fear is a behavior. A behavior is a lifestyle. A behavior is a mindset. A behavior is something that's a learn. Learn is what you see. Learn is what you associate with. Learn is what you uh, is around. And so what God wants you to do, God wants you to kill that spirit. In other words, God said, come out of her. Come out of that place. Separate yourself. See, God wants you to separate yourself from that voice. God wants you to separate yourself from that people. God wants you to separate yourself from that person. And see, the thing about it, there's some of you, there's some of you, you're fighting even, you're fighting even uh, ungodly soul ties. And, and you're in a situation where <coughs> you don't want to be in a situation, but financially, it seems justified to be in this situation. Financially, it seems justified to just stay. But in you staying, it's compromising your morals and it's compromising your standards. Listen to me. If you do it God's way, it's going to work. But if you don't, it won't. When you start, the way you start out a relationship, the way you start out a thing will determine how a will uh, or if it's going to last. If you start out something in love, if you start out something in peace, if you start out a relationship in honesty and, and communication, when troubles come, when trials come, that's going to be your standard. Your standard is going to be communication. Your standard is going to be trials. Your standard is going to be being able to talk to each other. Your standard is going to be communication, which means that when troubles come, you will be able to deal with it. And so it's so important. Everything is seed form. See, what you reap, you reap what you sow. So basically what you put in the ground, what you, how you treat people, what you do will determine what comes back to you. And so I say to you, for those people who are in a situation, make the right choice. Make the right choice. Don't make, don't make the, the, the world a choice, but make the godly choice. Because in the godly choice that you make, there's going to be a sacrifice. And see, what God is calling for in this promotion, this elevation, God is calling for a sacrifice. And a sacrifice is doing something, or is giving God something, giving God something as an offering. Giving God something that you pay so much attention to. Give God something that you love so much in the flesh. You sacrifice your time and give it to God. Give God your time. Give God your hurts. Give God your pain. See, some of you, you need to, some of you, you've been too quiet. You've been, you, you ain't talking. And see, that's why, <coughs> see, some of you, you're having physical problems. You're having mental problems. You have an emotional problem. It feels like your mind is shut in. It feels like you, you're, you're about to explode. See, because it feels like everything's in you is swallowed up because you don't talk to nobody. You keep everything to yourself. You're angry all the time. You're upset. But God said you need to learn how to release what's in you. Because if you don't learn how to release what's in you, it's going to turn against you. And that release is forgiveness. <coughs> Some of you need to forgive. Some of you, your elevation or your promotion is based on your ability to forgive. Your ability to fear forgive him. Your ability to forgive her. And when I mentioned the fear of rejection, the fear of rejection, that fear came from a sub subliminal thought. That fear of rejection, that voice came from something that hurt you. That voice came from something that violates you. That's something that molested you. That's something that did something to you that destroyed or that caused you to become a left a scar. See, God wants you to deal with that. <clears throat> God wants you to let that go. God wants to deliver you. This is why I said today, somebody's going to receive your miracle. Today, somebody's going to receive your breakthrough. It's because you obey God and you, and you fight and you, and, you, and you obey God and you kill the very thing that's holding you. See, God wants to deliver you, but the only way that God can deliver you out of this ungodly soul tie that you must make a choice and say, I Enough is enough. You must make a choice and say, I'm tired of it and let it go. See, God wants to deliver you your mind. See, some of you, you're facing mental attacks, emotional attacks. See, your mind is just turning and turning and turning. And your mind is turning so much that your mind is turning so much that it's almost like it's become tied up in a Boy Scout knot. 
And now that your mind is in a boy scout, not you are so confused. And it's like in this particular, it's like your your brain, your mind. It's like it's it's the side of a dome. And inside this dome, there's no filter. <coughs> there's just your thoughts. Your thoughts of fear. Your thoughts of hurt. Everything in your life. It's just your world. And nothing. God can't get in. But what God wants you to do, God want God want to break that cycle. God wants to break the way you think. God wants to come inside of your, your world <coughs> and statue you out of that world and give you his world. God wants to give you peace. There's some of you, you're living in destruction. You're living in torment. You're living in pain. You're living in hurt. You're living in silence. You're suffering in silence. You're suffering. You're travailing. And, and you won't talk to nobody. You won't reach out to nobody. You just keep it all to yourself. See, but God said, come unto me, all you that weary and heavy laden, and I will <coughs> give you rest. Will you trust God today? Will you? Let's pray. I'm going to pray for you. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you. I bless you and I magnify you. <coughs> God, for those people that are listening to me, God, deliver them. God set them free. God, you said in your word, whom the Son of Man has made free is free indeed. God, liberate them today. God, you know what they're dealing with. They're dealing with rejection. And it's a stronghold. God, release and, and, and separate them and let them free from that stronghold. Liberate them from that, that, that thing that's gripping them. Liberate that thing that's got a hold on them, God. Even got claws in them, God. God, we cut the claws off of the enemy right now. Free them right now. Set them free right now. God, for those people that feel like they're in an emotional prison. They feel like they're in a mental prison, God. God, cause those gates to swing open right now, God. Allow them to breathe again, God. Allow them to think again. Allow them to love again. God, for those people, God, that one time they did love, but now their love has become hurt. Every time they think of love, it becomes a thorn. When they think of love, it becomes something nasty, God. God, hurt and pain has perverted their way of thinking. It's perverted what they thought is love is turned to bad. And because of that, it's because of that, they, they look at everybody the same. They don't trust nobody. They don't believe in nobody. They don't listen to nobody. God set them free now. Liberate them in Jesus' name, we pray. And God, for those, God, that are battling and are wrestling with forgiveness, God, go in their heart. And God, you said in the word that you're going to stony heart and you're making a heart of flesh. God, go in their heart right now. God, let them feel again because many of them are numb. They are numb. They are numb to society. They are numb to relationships. They even numb to you, God. Because they've been hurt so much, God, they're just numb. God, liberate them today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. And God bless you. Have a good day.